why do people age? What can we do to slow down that aging process and even reverse it? Excited to talk about this. Hi guys, it's Anthony here and in this video I would love to talk about this book, Lifespan, why we age and why we don't have to written by David Sinclair. I'm pretty excited to talk about this book. Why? Because I have family members who implement the practices of this book and have drastically seen their life change for the better. I hope I can inspire some of you to also, you know, change parts of their life and live a longer life. So first of all, why do we age? Well, according to David Sinclair, Aging is basically a loss of epigenetic information. As we age, our cells get damaged and gradually lose their identity. The damage on our cells basically comes from the stress of living on planet Earth. There's nothing much more to say about that. So the stress on our cells, on our bodies, comes from various sources. The processed foods we consume, the polluted air we breathe in. We have natural radiation, we have x-rays, we have CT scans, UV from the sun. All these external things causes stress on our cells. Also normal DNA copying, which happens every day in our body, causes our cells to you know, lose their identity and also malfunction over time. I also want to make clear that we have a natural built-in mechanism to repair damaged cells or DNA. David calls this the longevity or the sirtuin genes. These are genes that consist of a family of proteins that help maintain our cells survive. They help maintain cell survivability and DNA stability. Now the problem is that once DNA or cell damage occurs, the sirtuins, you know, which are basically our cell defense troops, have to leave the genome to address that damage, which causes chaos in your epigenetic makeup. And David Sinclair calls this epigenetic noise. It is this noise that causes genes you know, to lose their identity and malfunction. You know, certain genes for cancer switch on and certain genes for Alzheimer's switch on. So it is through this chaos that we actually start to age. Now, can we slow it down? And is there a way to reverse it? That's the important question we have to ask ourselves. And according to David Sinclair, there is the sirtuins, you know, our cellular defense troops. We have to engage them to stimulate them as much as possible so that they can keep up with the normal wear and tear on our cells that comes from living on planet Earth. You know, all the things I said earlier. So how do we stimulate our longevity genes or these sirtuins, okay? How do we do that? David says that it's by cellular stress or putting our bodies on a bit of stress because this activates our survival circuits and this helps then activate the sirtuins or the cellular defense troops. There are three practices I'm gonna talk about right now that you can do every day to help boost your longevity genes or your sirtuins. So the first one is to eat less. How does this help? Well, when you restrict your calorie intake or when you fast, you know, when you have periods where you don't eat for, you know, a couple of hours or days, it, it helps adding stress to our bodies. It helps activate our survival circuits. So therefore it helps boost the longevity genes. There are several ways to do uh, fasting or calorie restriction. I like to do the 16-8 methods in which you don't eat for 16 hours and then have a period of eight hours where you can eat. So I like to skip breakfast, for example. I have my last meal at 8 p.m. in the evening, skip breakfast, and then I have a late lunch. So I have like a 16 hour period where I don't eat. You can also go a few days without eating. People do it. You're not gonna die, I promise. But of course, guys, don't starve yourself. You know, do your research. What do you eat? Well, eat as much vegetables as possible, limit your meat and dairy intake, and of course also try to avoid processed food, uh, which is, you know, fri french fries, donuts, all these, you know, crappy foods, try to avoid them. Try to eat organically if that's possible. That is one practice, natural practice, that you can do to live a longer life. The second thing you can do is to exercise more. Again, guys, exercise is a type of stress that you put onto your body. You start to breathe heavier, your heart rate goes up. All these things are a form of stress on your body which helps you live longer again. I wanna talk about a specific type of exercise that really boosts the longevity genes or the sirtuins and that is high intensity interval training. You can do it in various ways. You can do sprints, you can do, you can play tennis, uh, which is also high intensity. Every day you should do 15 minutes of high intensity interval training is enough. So that is a second practice we can do natural to boost our longevity. And the third practice is to expose yourself to extreme temperatures. So when you are taken out of the 
thermoneutral zone, which is basically a small range of temperatures that don't require your body to do extra work to keep you warm or cool you off, all sorts of things start to happen, right? When you're you know, in an ice bath or in a cold shower or in a cold sea, your, your breathing pattern shifts, your heart rate speeds up. So all these reactions are natural and show that the body is in a stress situation and due to homeostasis, which is basically the, the tendency of the body to always return to a stable equilibrium, your body will also want to react. Science shows that the cold activates your sirtuins. Expose yourself to the cold a couple of times a week or even as you can daily. I like cold showers, so I like to start off with a cold shower in the morning, but you can also you know, go for a walk in your t-shirt on a cold day or you know, take an ice plunge or you know, go swim in the sea when it's winter time or springtime. Now the question is, can heat also be good for boosting your longevity genes? Is heat also good for human bodies? According to studies, as David Sinclair says in his book, it is. Uh, studies in Finland have suggested that people who use a sauna frequently, you know, up to seven times a week, experience of enjoy a two-fold drop in heart disease, fatal heart attacks, and all-cause mortality events compared to people who only do it once per week. And then last thing guys, in his book he also recommends taking some supplements that help the anti-aging process or that boost your longevity genes. First one is resveratrol, which is basically also found in red wine, but I think it's better to take it as a supplement because in red wine you have alcohol. The second su supplement that you can use is NAD, all right, NAD. So if you take NAD, your sirtuins or your survival defense troops will work better. A third supplement you can take, and here you have to be careful because this is a prescription drug, so you need your doctor's approval for this, is metformin. It's actually a drug for helping uh, diabetes patients, but he says that metformin also does wonders, mimicking aspects of calorie restriction and also activating sirtuins. And the last one that you can take is rapamycin. Also a prescription drug has been shown to you know, increase lifespan in almost all animal studies. What I'm gonna do is, I'm in the description, I'm gonna do some daily recommendations. So how a day in the author's life look like, what he does every day you know, to live a long life. So I hope this was helpful, guys. It's a good book. Uh, I hope I give you some relevant information here and I talk to you next time. Cheers.